Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bada habita fillah The dunya is full of deceptiveness and we see how materialism we see how many things penetrate our hearts so easily and Bani Adam is weak the children of Adam are weak and we were created in toil <coughs> <clears throat> toil and struggle and so we need Iman to help us to protect us from the fitna and the trials and tribulations and the temptations of this world on Abi Sayyid al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الدنيا حلاوة خضرة وإن الله مستخلفكم فيها فينظروا كيف تعملون فاتقوا الدنيا واتقوا النساء فإن أول فتنة بني إسرائيل كانت في النساء Ruah Muslim. In this hadith, the hadith of Abi, uh, Abi Sa'id al Khudri, he said, uh, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily, <coughs> this life is like a beautiful garden or a, uh, a beautiful garden, or a delicious, uh, you know, piece, uh, a delicious greenery in a, a garden, or, or... And verily, Allah establishes you in it, in this life. And He looks to see what you will do. Therefore, fear this life, fear the dunya, and fear the women for verily the first trial that befell the children of Israel was the women and this is in Sahih Muslim in this hadith Sheikh Khudair mentions some benefits he explains in the dunya halwata khadira And he mentions halwa fi madakiha that it is it is sweet due to its taste, the taste of this life. And khudra, you know, the garden or greenery or like a vegetable, because of its beautiful, you know, this has to do with sight, the beautiful things you see in the dunya. So there are sweetness in the in he mentions the sweetness in its taste in the taste of this life you know tasting the fine fruits of this life or the 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 benefits of this life and the and also in seeing the beauty of this life and he said and this is the dunya which has been beautiful, beautified for the people. It has been beautified for the people. And it deceives them. And they are amazed by it. And then he mentions about the next, or he also mentions which is important for us that it's important to understand the haqiqa to dunya that it's important to understand the reality of this world and that he says wa annaha ma'luna 
Melona, and and that it is cursed. The dunya is cursed, and this is what we know from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. However, it is presented to people in this form, in this form of beauty, in that which deceives us, in that which is appealing to us. And he said, so it is upon the servant to beware, to be careful, to be cautious, so as not to have inhiraf, not to go astray. and be deceived and tested by its beauty. Then he mentions where Allah, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مُسْتَخْلَفُكُمْ فِيهَا And very Allah establishes you on it in this life. Uh, he says that Allah makes us vicegerents, you know, that we are protectors of this dunya, that we come one after another in succession. Of course we die, and then there will be those after us who, in fact, they take care of the environment. They, take, they are in leadership positions. They establish their power and establish, uh, hopefully, security in the land and not fear. But we are guardians of this dunya. And he said, and that is... that Allah requests from us that we, or orders us better, He commands us uh, to look after this world and to establish the worship of Him and Him alone. And then where the Prophet ﷺ said, Then He looks to see what you will do. <coughs> <clears throat> the Sheikh mentions. <clears throat> so then, the Prophet ﷺ mentions that that we are we are tested and we are watched by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to see how we will what we will do in this life. How will we? Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Will we be dece deceived by the dunya? We, will we fulfill our trusts and our duties? Our, our duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or, and, and spend this life trying to seek the pleasure of Allah, or seeking the anger of Allah, or attaining the anger of Allah. Then the Shaykh says, uh, Allah, uh, the Prophet says, Fattaqo dunya. The Prophet said, So fear the dunya. The Shaykh says, Ahdruha. Wahdru al inkita. And zinatiha. So he says, And beware of it. You know, beware of this. Uh, it doesn't mean you hate the dunya, no. It doesn't mean you hate this life and they, so much beauty in here and so many good things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, created for us as verses, as ayat, to reflect on Him, to think about Him and His majesty, to think about the hereafter, to remind us of, uh, of the ni'mah of life that we have and the death which sure, is sure to come. So beware of the dunya. And beware of being of stopping uh, of of being deceived by its beauty and the pleasure in it. that we have to know the reality of this life and that this life this abode of the dunya is something that 
we only pass through quickly and it will pass <coughs> and that it is not the abode of permanency of our permanent residency so to speak instead it's very short in the time period and if you reflect and you see where you are in your life maybe some of you are under 20 some of us are 30 some of us in our 40s some of us in our 50s and 60s and when we reflect on how quick it, it was that we got here I remember yesterday I just became Muslim it seems I can remember those days I can remember hanging out with the brothers I can remember I had dreadlocks on my shoulders we used to you know wear our Timberland boots pants sort of sagging Carhartt jackets that was yesterday now here I'm in Saudi Arabia and have children and this life it just goes we lost how many loved ones we've seen so many people go it's just like that this life pretty soon maybe my children or someone will be visiting me in the hospital if I live that long and if I die in that way and it'll be oh I was just speaking about this issue yesterday it's like that this life and it deceives us and we're travelers and the Sheikh says, similar to the man who seeks shade, seeks, uh, seeks shade and finds some shade. And he just rests just for uh, momentarily, just for a little bit. Then, after he gains some comfort, he moves on on his journey continues on his journey and he says this is the similarity the situation that we find ourselves in as he said so therefore the the abd meaning the believer is in this life as if he is a stranger or as if he is a traveler as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in other hadith and so for, for this reason he cannot establish himself meaning to just to hold on and cling to this life and he should avoid the evil of it and the things that are made beautified and deceptive deceptively beautified in it and that he should be open and accepting of the haq of the truth and the good and correctness in it that which is straight and correct and what he was created for meaning the purpose and what is the purpose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. So that means the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is spending his life in this dunya worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preparing himself for the end journey the end of this this journey this is just the, the preparation phase in a sense. And then he said, he said, وَهُوَ الْعُبُودِيَةِ الْعُبُودِيَةُ لِلَّهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى And he said that it is worship, meaning that we were created for servitude, servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most High, the Almighty, the Magnificent, subhanahu. And then he mentioned one of the last parts of the hadith where the Prophet said, nisa, and fear the women. The Shaykh said, La Rib and the Nisa 
فئنا وإذا خرجت المرأة استشرفها الشيطان وتبعتها الأنظار فعلى المرأة ألا تكون سببا في إدلال الناس وإغوائهم The Sheikh said about fearing the women not meaning the women are going to kill us not meaning the women are a threat to us or that they're less than us or anything like this but rather <coughs> the Sheikh said no doubt that women are, are a trial a trial for who? trial for men that if a woman goes out then the shaitan he beautifies her for the men and makes it so that the people look at her that the eyes follow her so it is upon a woman is upon the woman that she should not be a reason for causing people to be misguided and deceived and then he mentioned that she the women should not leave unless it, their homes except out of necessity and he mentioned the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقَرْنَا فِي بِيُوتِ كُنَّا you know and, and be in your, your dwellings and this is in order to not be a trial and a test and a temptation and a deception for the men and then the Sheikh mentioned on the last statement where the Prophet ﷺ said <coughs> For verily the first trial or test for the children of Israel was the women. And he said that this was, then after this he said, he, this is the statement, state, the Sheikh statement, then after that, the the trial meaning after the trial of the women then the sins became greater meaning that there was even greater and more sins and more trials after that fitna the sins increased basically and until they left their religion. So meaning that they began with something, being tested with something, the fitna, and the trials of the opposite sex, <clears throat> of being tempted and falling into temptation and falling into sinfulness. And from that, it just began to move more and more sin until they become immersed in sin, until they just leave their religion. And this is why Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions al ma'asi barid al kufr that sinfulness is a means to disbelief doesn't mean the the one who's committing sins is a disbeliever no of course not but what it means is that it's a a means it's a wasila it is a way to leave in your religion meaning the more you become immersed in sins the more, the easier it is for you to go to disbelief. Because you become swamped in sins to where you don't make toba. For example, I know a true story of an individual who began looking at those marital websites to get married on, on the thing through the internet. From that, he began to find, well, he can't see, especially Muslim ones. Then he needs to go to websites where he can see the women. From there, he began looking at the, the uncovered women. 
after a time, he began looking at other things with women that are uncovered until the pornography. After the pornography, he began to have girlfriends and he began to involve himself in, in Zena and all these kind of things until eventually he was clouded and immersed in sins into alcohol, into drugs, into everything, the whole lifestyle, till he just left his religion. So you see how it is, the chutwa to shaitan. It's step by step. It doesn't come overnight, especially with Ahl Iman, the people who are very strong in their Iman. It's got to start small. None of us are above reproach. It can happen to any of us. When you realize that and you don't become arrogant, you realize that, then you'll make istighfar often. And you'll try to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often because you realize how weak and frail we are. This is why the scholars, they mention, even though people criticize them, especially the modernists and the reformers, uh, about Qawaid, the Qaida, uh, Sadda Dhriya, meaning to close the door. And Allah mentions in the Quran about lowering the gaze, for example. <coughs> what is that? That's Sadda Dhriya. Because it, it's also. Also mentioned, we know that, as the Prophet ﷺ said, looking the second time is, you know, you're incurring a sin. So the first time you see, oh, you know, it's not a sin. But if you you continue, then this is where the the sin incurs. Sadadriya, you're cutting off the means to sin. You're closing the door. So. By lowering the gaze, the people who practice that, they are closing the door to lead to zina. Because if they're really strong about lowering their gaze, they're more than likely not going to, you know, if it's sincere and it's in their heart and they're striving, then they're not going to fall into zina and, and other or sins that are less than that. Because they are already cutting off the door. The one who doesn't sit alone uh, from amongst men uh, sitting with women alone that are not there, uh, not lawful for them and what have you, then they're more than likely not going to what? Do the next step. You know, have relations and then deeper relations or what have you. So this shows us the importance of this qaida, this principle, and likewise the hikmah and the wisdom of Islam to help protect you, protect your honor, protect your property, protect your wealth, protect your life. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.